It's not every day that you hear about Minecraft in the news, and it's even rarer for the game's community to cross over into the world of cybersecurity. But back in January, that's exactly what happened. The week of January 19th saw the massive Squidcraft Games Twitch tournament, which is exactly what it sounds like. A Minecraft and Squid Games crossover at the height of the series' popularity. 150 mostly Spanish-speaking creators would participate, and the event was moving along smoothly, until suddenly, one by one, more than 12 creators based in the small country of Andorra would drop out of the event. Their connection to the internet had abruptly been cut, along with the rest of the country. And the cause? Minecraft hackers hiring a DDoSing service to take down Andorra Telecom, the sole internet provider to nearly 80,000 Andorran citizens. In today's episode of Minecraft Uncovered, we're diving into the story of the Squidcraft games and the Minecraft cyber attack that shut down a country. When the Squidcraft games were first announced in November of 2021, nobody could have expected the international attention it would draw. It was just a Minecraft tournament from a streamer, nothing we haven't seen before. But by early January, when the details of the event were finally revealed, it became apparent that this was going to be much bigger than anticipated, and it was already anticipated to be pretty big. 150 creators, $100,000, and six days to knock out every opponent in your way until you're the last man standing. Among the names of those joining were Comanche, El Shokas, The Grefk, Ibai, even Oran Play, who's essentially the dream of Spain but twice as popular on Twitch. The event was going to be incredible, and when it began, it once again surpassed expectations. The debut of this tournament collected over a million live viewers on Twitch, and as the days went on, that number only grew as the number of contestants slowly dropped. By just the second day, 29 creators, or roughly 20% of the tournament, had already been eliminated from the simplest of games, and yet the viewership rose by 50,000. 14 less players the next day, 11 dropped out the next, and even with an unusual dip in viewers the day after, the numbers grew higher and higher. By the penultimate day, viewership was nearly 1.2 million at its peak, and the finale stunned the Twitch community with a whopping 2.26 million viewers all watching as Ali Gamers beat out El Shokas, the most viewed streamer in the tournament, for the grand prize. A hundred grand prize, to be precise. These were huge numbers, record-setting numbers. Numbers that gave Squidcraft Games the title of the largest Twitch Rivals tournament ever held on the site, as well as giving El Shokas the third highest peak viewership in Twitch history, the other two records being held by other members of the Spanish community that also joined the tournament. Squidcraft Games was quite possibly the largest event in the history of Spanish streaming, esports, and gaming as a whole. But outside of the Spanish community, the massive tournament went largely unnoticed. Well, except for one thing. Remember how the event dipped on the fourth day out of nowhere? Turns out, it wasn't without a reason. 10,000 viewers, 54 streamers all gone, some of them suddenly disappearing from the site without an explanation. The reason why? Coordinated DDoS attacks, bringing their home country's network to its knees over a Minecraft tournament. On January 21st of 2022, in the dead of night, Andorra Telecom, the sole company holding a monopoly over internet, phone, and TV in the country of Andorra, received some weird data coming down its pipelines. About 100 gigabits per second of it, according to some sources, between two and five times the national average. Someone or something was funneling inane, monumental amounts of data into the modest networks of Andorra Telecom, and unfortunately, they just couldn't handle it. The network strained, the network slowed, and eventually, the network crashed. Over a period of several days, the network struggled just to stay online, dropping tens of thousands of Andorran citizens off the web, sending the government into a frenzy and dashing any hopes of Andorran streamers hoping to succeed in the tournament. According to a European outlet by the name of Euro24, nearly a dozen streamers were knocked out of the Squidcraft games, including the Grefk, Rubius, and Oran Play himself, just from the DDoSing that plagued their homes throughout the tourney. At its peak, two-thirds of the country were completely offline, not slowed down, not buggy, entirely dead in the waters. 
obviously this was an issue. Remember the last time your internet went out? How about your neighborhoods? Remember the chaos, the murder, the looting, the destruction? Multiply that by a thousand and apply it to a country. Schools, offices, and government networks were all shut down just the same as everyone else. And that meant losing time, money, resources, and sanity. So it was up to Endora Telecom to get to work and put an end to the outages, which after a few tries, they did. By the 25th, four days after the first attack and a day after the tournament ended, internet was stable once again in the country of Andorra. No more alerts, no more outages, no more panic. Everything was back to normal. But despite a somewhat quick and seemingly peaceful resolution, at least for Andorra, though the streamers were left in the dust, there was still a problem. In the minds of streamers, viewers, Andorans, government officials, teachers, workers, even cybersecurity professionals that had been studying the case, there were two major questions that had been left unanswered. The first, who had the power to take down an entire country? And the second, more importantly, was why? I have to be upfront and say that after this point in the video, nearly everything is speculation. Plenty of news sources have made claims as to the source and the motive behind these attacks, but no official statements or research can really back them up, so we just kind of have to take their word for it. As such, I'll just give all the info, theories, everything I know. Now, that second, more important question of why might seem simple. Somebody wanted to rig the tournament. But if that is the case, it raises a hundred more questions even more confusing. Were they rigging it against the entirety of Andorra? Or was it a specific player? And if so, why did they go through the effort of knocking down the entire country instead of just one network? Maybe it was rigging it in the favor of a specific player, but that doesn't make much sense either since there were still 40, 50 more players after the attack, which aren't great odds unless you're rooting for someone with just one or two close matches and even still bad luck could take over. And if they were rigging it to favor someone, then who? Was it the winner, Ali? Maybe the runner-up, El Shokas, one of the biggest creators in the tournament? Were they hired by a streamer to help them? Just a friend of the streamer trying to get them an unfair advantage? Maybe a fan gone rogue, taking down a whole country just to impress their favorite creator? Honestly, we don't even know that the attack was caused by the tournament at all, though it seems generally agreed upon that they're at least somewhat related. Honestly, we may never get a good answer as to why something like this happened, but I do have a theory. A pretty outlandish one, but there was a common theme in my research that actually doesn't seem to have too much to do with the tournament, but rather one of the players in it. Or on play. The so-called Spanish dream of earlier. See, apparently there had been some sort of drama in the past regarding where he lived. He claimed it was Spain, the community told everyone he was in Andorra, he fought back and denied it, and it went back and forth like tennis without either side wanting to give up. So my theory is that someone, some crazy fan or hater for all we know, decided that the best way to find where Oron truly hailed from was to take down the internet of an entire country. And if he went down with it, the question was answered. It turns out he did live in Andorra, or was at the very least streaming from the country, and that revelation seemed to cause a bit of commotion on Twitter amongst his fans. I'm not super well involved with the Spanish speaking community, so anyone that is, please feel free to correct me if I'm making a baseless accusation and don't know it, or misinterpreting something, or just generally being an idiot, but that's honestly the most specific possibility I can think of with any sort of credence outside of just somebody rigged the tournament. But that brings us to the other question, who done it? Again, there's no real answer that I think we'll ever get. Oron and Rubius banded together to offer a $10,000 bounty to anyone that could find who was responsible for the attack on Andorra, but nothing ever came of it. According to the Record Media, an online cybersecurity outlet, all the traffic that flooded Endora Telecom came from a known DDoS for hire service, a booter basically, which would explain why they were so easily able to take down the network. Booters are notoriously cheap and easy to use, so all it would take is some disgruntled viewer paying a few hundred to some shady service, firing up a botnet, and flooding Endora Telecom with data until they couldn't hold it back. Of course, they didn't provide a source for this theory, just saying that the attacks were linked with a service like that, but I can believe it. At the end of the day, the true story behind the Squidcraft cyber attacks will probably always be a mystery. But one thing is for certain. No matter if or when the mystery is solved, we'll always remember the day that Minecraft shut down a country.
Thank you all for watching. I hope you all greatly enjoyed. I was debating not even making this video because I felt like there wasn't enough to even say about it, but like they brought down an entire country over Minecraft. How could I possibly ignore that? Anyways, I don't have anything super important to say here other than follow my Twitch for some bangers this summer, join my Discord to talk about things and play games and do other stuff that makes you happy, and of course, like and subscribe if you enjoyed and want more, or dislike it if you don't, whatever, YouTube took the dislike button out back and threw it off a cliff, so I'm not even sure it matters anymore. That's it, thanks for watching, enjoy your life, stay safe, have yourselves a good one, peace, peace.